In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we're getting my mad K truck off road ready. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Mighty Of the Come. best four-wheel driving channel on YouTube. <laughs> We're all about off-road, spectacular, adventures all the time, all poor driving, quattro all-wheel drive. Well said. All through the mud, sick rigs, out back, adventures in the city. Mud bogging, overlanding, is that what we do? Picking did? up goat milk lattes. Mighty truck With mods. so much stuff loaded on your truck, your diesel consumption is through the roof. Well, luckily We're for all me, about it. luckily for me, my mad little K truck is not diesel. What it is is turbocharged, and it's got an ECU in it, and it's had a very basic setup over Wi-Fi, but it has not been tuned. I've put nearly a thousand Ks on this thing. First turbocharged landscaping job. Here we go. Oh. Time to cover it all up. And dump it. Not yet. I'm still tuning it. I was gonna say, I just, I just sort of. <laughs> all, it's got wheels since you last saw it. Yeah, goes good now. I just picked up a load of dirt. What do you guys got? Not loaded. I should have rang you. I love this little truck, I daily drive it, it's the best thing ever, but it hasn't been tuned. So there's a few things we're gonna to do to get this thing off-road ready, including some mad mud tires. Which is, I'm pretty sure that doorbell is the mud tires. Probably. And also, um, I need some protection under here, because last time we took it off-roading, it got a little bit hammered. Yeah. While Marty was um, scraping his way through the mud box, a couple of scars were later exhibited on his undercarriage. That's. Exactly and therefore right. some protection is required and that is exactly what's going to happen. So it's getting a tune first because yeah. that's the first and foremost most important thing that has to happen. Then it's getting some off-road mods. Assuming it survives the dyno, then it's going to get some off-road mods. But, or, but if it goes kablamo, we're buying a Land Cruiser. So come with me. Just going to take you for the ride. Going to do some mad mods on this thing. Let's do it. On my way down the highway to Caltech. So far, so good. Um, I've got my little gauge here. It's giving me all my essential readouts, coolant temperature, oil pressure, oil temperature, and AFR, and it all looks good. The base map is good to get me here. I'm being really gentle on it. I don't want it to cause it any issues. Um, the truck is as cramped, noisy, and uncomfortable as usual, but that's not at all what this is about. Driving out here, I had a chance to think about what I'm, what I'm worried about with this particular tune, and why it's a bit more at stake than, say, a Civic. Well, with a Civic, you can get another engine locally. Um, I can't get another engine for this if I blow it up, so we really only get one shot at it. Um, so far, so good. It drives really nicely, but it's either going to be an explosion at the top of the piston that breaks something, or we're going to bend something underneath the piston, or something unexpected might happen, turbo's not working, all things that you can't really measure on the road. Because driving on the road, it's great, but the dyno is where we might uncover some more issues. Hello there, mate. Hello, Scotty. Fancy seeing you here. Indeed. I feel like I know this beast already because we've talked on the phone so much. Yeah. First time in real life though. Turbocharged, intercooled, KFDE, <laughs> uh, three cylinder, 0.6 litre engined K truck. Um, our fuel system's up there with a Haltech flex sensor on it. Uh, fuel pressure regulator mm -hmm. that has a vacuum signal going back to it. Yeah. Fuel pressure sensor in it. I remember speaking about all this. You know what, when you were telling me, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, man, you're gonna to have to get to the tank, it's not return, or... <laughs> so and like, easy. Yeah, dude, no, no wonder there was no resistance. You're like, no. yeah, sweet, dude, just do it. Yeah, yeah. I'll call you back in five minutes. <laughs> Plug, put the tray up. This is, this is how performance cars are meant to be worked on. You just pull the whole car off the top, Yep. killing it. And go for it. I don't know anything about the four-wheel drive system, so what's to go with that, how it's, does it work? It's, the reason we piggybacked is that that's reasonably independent. It won't care. Yeah. It's, yeah. If you put in four-wheel drive, it, it adjusts, turns some solenoids on and off because it's air, like air actuated. Yeah, yeah. And if you do that, it will just work. And the most important part, does the ram go up and down better? It goes up, down better, and it doses when you put it up and down. <laughs> like, what else do you need? <laughs> so, what do you think? Should we slap it on your I dyno? Like it. Yeah. Well, how are you feeling about this one? Because I know it's a bit more quirky than a Civic or a RB26. I don't know about the size of the cabin. That's going to be interesting. 
I do have a bit of experience in a, the diner style tipper trucks. So oh, I, yeah. I yeah. drove them a long time ago. Yeah. And I used to have to drive them with the gear stick on the inside, which was always a little bit unique. Well, but so I, you can also drive it from outside the car. <laughs> Just a burp, burp, burp. <laughs> anyway, should we put um, it on and see what happens? Good value. Let's get it on. I might um, get you to reverse her in, you to put that down. Yep. You to communicate with whoever you are communicating with. <laughs> Call for some new rods. Anyone. Yeah. Burger Burger needs some new rods in aisle three. Um, a lot of initial setup has already been done, so this should be a quick and easy dyno session. We want to non-destructively find the limits of what the engine can handle from our DIY turbo setup. For simplicity, we're going to test this thing in two-wheel drive. I'm never going to get four-wheel drive, right? No. Impossible. Yep, cool. I can't really give you much info about rev limiters. I can't give you much info about what kind of boost they will take. So this is kind of up to your experience, I guess, now. So do you have an idea of what you'd like well, to do? Like you said, I don't know enough about this particular engine, but we'll tune it like I tune everything else, yep. which is going to be reasonably safe. Mm -hmm. So we'll be fairly conservative with ignition timing because the thing is going to pull a huge, a decent load yeah. a fair bit of the time. Yep. Um, mixtures, we'll, we'll try and run something like under more than about seven or eight pounds of boost if we get that far. Fine. We'll probably run about 12 to one oh, in okay. our petrol mixtures. Yep. Um, at five and six and seven pounds, we'll probably end up running 12.8, 13, 13.2, yep. whatever sort of, whatever it's happy with, whatever it tells us it wants. Yep. Um, boost wise, uh, I don't know, like you said, I don't know this engine at yep. all. So all I want to do is tune it, make sure it sounds happy, make sure there's no detonation, make sure it feels good. Mm -hmm. I want to just keep revving it and keep putting boost in it until there, there's no return. So if we yes. put a bit more yep. boost in it and it doesn't bring up any more power, we'll knock it back. Yep. I want to rev it. I don't even care what a claimed rev limiter is. We'll just keep revving it until mm -hmm. the power and the torque rolls over. Yep. Then we'll talk about, all right, well, yeah, 12,000 might be too high. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. But for a little 660, like this thing, it might rev to yeah. 8, 9, 10 green. Like, you don't know. I don't know anything about the internals except that it's probably got reasonably weak internals. Are All the right. conrods made of the same material as this thing? <laughs> Could be what they is. Is this it? Yeah, that's the fourth <laughs> conrod right there. You know what? I hope we don't find out. Nah, <laughs> no, it's alright man. Well, I appreciate you using your expertise and knowledge because we, the, the base tune you put in has been great. I've put probably a thousand Ks on it, man. Oh, Cutting it, it around. Awesome. Setting sand, like dumping sand and rubbish and cardboard and all sorts of stuff. Like it's just such a fun little truck. And now it's great because we're at this point now where it's, you know, just do it properly. It's going to come together. Yeah, and make it something I can just jump in and drive. So what are we thinking? Factory, what did it have at the wheel stock? Uh, these are roughly. either 35 or... The, the, fa the legal limit is 47 kilowatts at the mm -hmm. engine. Mm -hmm. These, I think, are slightly less, but with a slightly higher torque number, but that okay. could just be them fiddling with the numbers. But these mm -hmm. engines are in heaps of different vehicles. All right, so if we said it had 30 or 35 kilowatts at the wheels, we'll run it up. What if we... We'll, we'll get to sort of 50, 55 oh, kilowatts. Then we'll reconvene and figure out what, what we want. It doesn't need to make big power, man. It's more just making it reliable and, and mm. get on the highway, mm. sit it at a high rev limit, take mm. it for all driving, put it up a hill. That's what we're going to do. It's funny to think that, say, if we make 60 kilowatts, you're like, <laughs> like oh, okay. <laughs> but alternatively, you, you have made 100% power increase. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be happy that's, with 50%. That's what we need to talk man, about. Man, 50% and I'll be stoked. All right. Shall we do? Let's get it done. Because we've been running it with no variable cam control, now that we do have it, um, all the fueling is different again because while the variable cam control is working well, yes. we're hopefully getting more air in, meaning that we need more fuel in. Okay. So all of that learned fueling will go through again. Is it fully out the window or still somewhat helpful? Um, well, you know what? I just applied the learning, so we'll be able to go back through and have oh, a look at it. But I would expect to put, be putting in um, on something like this, 5, 10, 15 percent more fuel yeah, okay. and making that much more power, yeah. really.
there's been minis that have uh, that have fought harder than this thing. Dude, that's <laughs> that's heaps for this thing. And you think it did it happily? Yeah, that felt really good. Felt good. So we'll go back through the logs and just suss out what's going on. Dude, but it's tuned. Well, it's it's, it's it's feeling just the combination of yeah, just just having the package yeah. come back together, even. What we were talking about the, the throttle pump stuff yep. and i know that the remote chewing it is a thing um you gotta feel but it. just feeling it watching it Hearing watching it. the torque that yep. it's making there and then and now it's yeah like man 50 kilowatts out of a little three cylinder zero it's pretty healthy for 600 cc 0.6 liters in something that weighs about a ton that tray is going to go up and down like no one's business. Oh man. What are we going to get put in it? Whatever you want. Lunch. You're you going to put a pool in it? Sure. Do the pool thing and sure. then put people in it and then see you later. I, put <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought of it, but yes, I'm going to do that. With Scott happy that the tune is safe and complete, I asked him to take it for a test drive and tell me what he really thinks of it. <laughs> All right, here we go. See why it needs this turbocharger. She has not got a lot of grunt. Come on, baby. <laughs> but in cruising, six gear, sixty k, fifth gear, sorry, seventy k's an hour. it makes is pretty awesome pretty awesome mate drives good fantastic um, with a bit of load on it i suspect i can see a clutch in your near future oh yeah yeah of course but overall i, I love it um mate, drives good starts good just just works as a normal car now oh you can sell your recipe back to the, the japanese <laughs> <laughs> one left feel free to gift it to yes, gift it to anyone you think might be really really yeah, like it, it a... let's go <laughs> yes, that's so good. Oh, what an awesome, awesome little truck. I could not be happy with that. A few more mods to do now. We're not totally finished. Underbody protection is a big thing when you're doing any serious off roading. One rock in the wrong spot can bring your rig to a halt in the middle of nowhere. So my next stop is to a friend's place who runs a radiator distributor. He's got a plasma cutter and has offered to help me knock up a custom bash plate from scratch. Pretty much just got to protect this steering rack here. That's yeah. probably the most important part. And just pick something rigid to tie in up here and tie in up here and see what happens. It's not the thickest sheet metal, is it, anyway? But it's more just getting like a... Um, a bit of an insurance policy, like if you do put it at a stupid angle or slide it on something, it's not like you're sliding it on your steering rack that's then broken. So I've got about 1% experience doing metal fabrication. Christian's got a bit more than me, but between the two of us, we'll be able to do an average job of making an excellent bash plate. <laughs> Let's do it, man. Let's make it. Keen-eyed viewers might notice that that's the exact shape of an RX-7 boot floor because this legend cut it up for me. <laughs> After doing some measurements, we've got a hand-drawn diagram, which Christian will then draw up in CAD software. This then tells the plasma cutter where to squirt the electricity out. A thicker bash plate will of course be more durable, but we have to balance that up with the weight penalty that this tiny truck will then have to drag up the road. What's a plasma cutter? Compressed air, and imagine a weld art with compressed air blowing through it, and when it does that, you get plasma art, which cuts stuff really well, aluminium, steel. So now it's cut out, we're just gonna like check it out, test fit it to the car, and our bash plate is well and truly underway. The other mad tool we're gonna use, as well as a grinder, is a pan brake, which allows you to do accurate folds and bends in sheet metal. In our case, we only need a few degrees to match the shape of the underside of the truck, but this makes it really easy, and now we can do a test fit. We've finished cutting out the plate, it's all looking really good. Now I'm gonna weld on these little standoffs that's gonna hold everything to the front of the truck, because there's not much else to attach to up there, it's just really thin, like two mil sheet metal. 
He's gonna TIG on a reinforcement plate that will go over this steering column part. I'm gonna MIG this, and then we'll have our bash plate pretty much done. And an hour or two later, we've got underbody protection courtesy of some mad tools and a helpful mate. Well, we have a motto here, sometimes drive in, sometimes drive out. We've done both. <laughs> it's a new day, my bash plate is on, I'm looking freaking awesome. Uh, I've got a booking to go and get a wheel alignment, and I've also got to put on my mud tyres, and then this mad little truck will be bush ready. Right, my muddies are ready to go. Nice and fresh. Exactly the same as the ones I used last time. I'm gonna take these wheels off, adjust the mud guards back again, take off the flares, and the only other job I've got to do, I've got to waterproof my intake system. I've got this mad enclosed filter, but I need to make sure that it's completely waterproof. And I'm gonna put a snork off there. Thanks to our skewomorphic rear guards, it's easy to convert the truck from street weapon to bush nugget. Or is it the other way around? So you've probably heard me say that the truck has a lift kit. It's got a body lift, which means you lift the sort of body off the chassis, but you don't really get much extra height. You get more clearance, but you don't get more height. All the height comes from the wheels. You can see from there how much extra there is from here to here and from there to there. So that's where you get all the extra clearance. It's all about getting the biggest muddy you can fit on this thing. These aren't the biggest, they're like 25 inches overall. Sounds small, but it's only a small truck. Wide body, narrow body. The last step here is to check the wheel alignment and try and put a tiny bit more height into the front coilovers for some extra clearance. little bits of preparation are done including this massive hat to keep the sun off because it's freaking hot in Australia let me show you what I've got up to this is less about turbo trucks and more about the practicality of camping in the middle of nowhere I put this green box back in that keen-eyed viewers would have noticed from the last time it's really good because it's waterproof but the back of this is clearly not so this means spares robe inflator deflator sleeping bag spare tarp a few tools a few other bits and pieces just stuff I don't want to get wet then I've got a swag. Uh, I've also got just a spare box, also waterproof. And then I've also got coolant and power steering fluid and other essentials. Uh, and with lots of space to spare. And the idea is that all this stuff can get packed up and tied down and I've still got usable space in the tray if we need to tip anything off or take anything else with me. Um, so looking pretty good. So with the exception of like clothes and other essentials, I reckon I'm just about done and ready to roll. Pretty keen actually to uh, hit the road in this truck. Now I've got the muddies on there, makes a huge difference. Fixes the gearing actually um, in a pretty big way. Uh, low range works, diff lock works, all that stuff still works. So I should be all set to hit the bush. Truck, yeah, I'm so happy with how the K truck has turned out. It's been a lot of That's work to get to this I point. Was. I was it's been a lot. My we bought this as a stock tip truck, not stock, had a lift kit on it. That's about it. Otherwise, it's basically a standard Daihatsu high jet. And we took it off road last year through the Blue Mountains yes. and ended up at Bathurst and drove it up Mount Panorama very, very slowly. And since then, I decided that it needed more power, so we turboed it. Martin, I like the truck. I'm glad you bought it. Some of the cars that you like, I think are shit. That's okay. Some of the cars you like, I think are shit. But mine but that's... aren't, that's the difference. Okay, right. Mine good. can actually be unequivocally agreed on that they're good. People know out there, they're gonna start commenting whose cars they like better. Yours are shite. <laughs> okay, but no. this one, while shite, <laughs> is good. This here is like a possum with only three legs. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you feel sorry for it. Did you accidentally bite that leg off while you no. were looking at it? No, you feel sorry for it, but it still, it keeps going. Okay, good. Anyway, so both this little beast and the Jimny, both K cars, <laughs> sort of, um, we've had a lot of fun adventures with those, but the adventures are not finished. Yes, this has been preparing for another adventure. And that's exactly what we're going to do in a few weeks' time. And this time, instead of getting the Jimny, which was kind of basically stock, and this that was basically stock other than some suspension stuff, now we've got a turbocharged K truck. We've got a big block K Jimny that's not a K because of the big engine, but it's K sized. And we will be taking them on an epic adventure. So thank you for watching this last little series of Jimny and K truck. Of course, right now you are on the best four wheel driving channel on YouTube. So make sure you leave a comment. Tell us about your favorite uh, off road adventure. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Make sure you sink some beers in the shed. Do you know you could be on the, the, the best 
K truck channel on the internet. Oh, there's some pretty good ones. Oh, there's some pretty though. good ones, actually. Yeah, there's rotary ones and all Martin, sorts of stuff. I would also just like to acknowledge your shirt. Truck Year. Which is an excellent Truck Year shirt that has your truck on it. Yeah, in this all its different forms. Look at it. Limited edition. You can get it on the Mighty Car Mod How store. How long is it available We thought for we'd Martin? make it. A short time. I know that me and like six other K-Truck nerds are going to buy it and think it's the best thing ever. And that is so fine. K-Truck nerds, if you love this thing, smash the button. We'll send it to you anywhere in the world. We're going to make at least 10 t-shirts. So when you click on the 10. link below, if it says buy, you are one of the lucky 10. 10. If it says sold out, 10 people got there before you. What if only nine people go for it? Anyway, it's worth saying as well, you know, going from a stock truck to where this is today, sometimes you watch shows and they're like, overnight, we modified our vehicles. It's not an overnight thing. No. It's weeks, if not months, and almost a year actually. This, exactly a year ago today, yes. we're driving around with this with Keith Urban in it, like doing, yeah. doing crazy stuff when it was basically stock. Because a K-Truck is not like doing the record series we did on the WRX, which is a really known platform, known mods, there's a bit of a yeah. recipe. This is not the case. And also, the other thing in terms of talking of Hollywood is that on these other shows, you, you're not buying record engines that possibly don't work. Mm. You're just, it all just works and looks seamless and everything gets done. But the reality yep. is sometimes it's messy, Martin. That's what it's sometimes like life. Yep. Doesn't go to plan. Yep. What is the plan? What's the meaning of it all? I don't know. But having a turbo K-Truck tipper that's very practical and fun and just silly and fun to look at and makes great noises, you just got to do follow your interest, follow your passion, including your truck gear shirt. That's what well, I'm following. Thank you very much, people. Of course, there's going to be more four-wheel driving adventures coming at you soon, including a, a an epic... Jimny and K-Truck Adventure. Mm. Um, there it is. We're going to go and explore some camping recipes and we will be taking you on just a Bellissimo adventure. Martin, well done on your truck. Thanks, man. Thanks um, for your help. Uh, well, you did it, Martin. This was your inspiration. We did it. Was the helium in the balloon that flew us onto a journey. When you did that, I straight away thought of coolant hitting the ceiling. Deflated and then <laughs> sunk down. I'll never forget that. Just that. Beep, 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 well, it's, it's still, still, it's still stained stained. up there. It's still Oh, my stained. God. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Thanks, everybody. We're going to go get some camping recipes. Dutch oven, apparently, is How the thing happy will people, people do. Dutch rudder or Dutch oven? A Dutch oven. What if you had a Dutch rudder oven in your Dutch boat having a Dutch rudder? Hey, question. Does that mean no more four-wheel drive... Um, show anymore like we not we don't have to be the greatest four drive show anymore because it's over right we don't have to well, do that it's anymore. not over we will continue being the greatest four wheel drive show on the internet no one else is even close okay there's a lot of people trying they're not quite there and the I audience knows it man they, they know there's no one there's no one that's as legit as you and man me. some of those shows are so good yeah i know but they're all on a set it's yeah, not true. real. They're not actually out in the bush. You and I are legitimately driving around the streets. Yeah, right. Lucky, lucky the camera's off because, man, people do not want to hear this bullshit. 